the feeling it, every runner chases. There is a specific moment in running when everything suddenly clicks. You know exactly what I'm talking about. The first few kilometers are a struggle. Your legs feel heavy, your breathing is erratic, your mind is full of noise from your day at work. But then, usually around the 30 minute mark, something shifts. Your breathing settles into a perfect rhythm. Your stride feels effortless, as if the ground is pushing you forward. The noise in your head goes silent, and for a few minutes, it doesn't feel like you are running. It feels like your body is carrying you. Most runners call this runner's high. But here's the hard truth. Most runners will go their entire lives without ever experiencing it. Almost everyone misunderstands what causes it. And the science you have been told about endorphins is completely wrong. Runner's high is not luck. It is not magic. And it is definitely not random. It is a precise neurochemical state, a biological switch that you can flip. And if you understand how it works, you can stop waiting for it to happen by accident and start triggering it on demand. The big myth, why endorphins are a lie. For decades, the fitness industry told us, runner's high happens because of endorphins. It sounds nice, endorphins is a catchy word, but scientifically it is impossible. Endorphins are large molecules. They are too big to cross the blood-brain barrier. They work in your body to reduce pain, They're like a natural painkiller for your legs, but they cannot enter your brain to create euphoria. Studies have confirmed this. When you feel high, it's not endorphins. So what is it? It is a completely different chemical system, a system that is much more ancient and much more powerful. And it's not one single chemical. Think of it like an orchestra. You need the violins, the drums, and the piano to all play in perfect synchronization. If one is out of tune, the music, the high, never happens. The real star, the bliss molecule. The conductor of this orchestra was identified in a breakthrough study in 2015. The chemical responsible for the high is not an opioid. It is an endocannabinoid, specifically a molecule called anandamide. The name comes from the Sanskrit word ananda, which means bliss. Anandamide is a lipid that crosses the brain barrier easily. When it floods your system, it creates four specific sensations. Reduced anxiety, a feeling of flow, dilated blood vessels helping you breathe, and a gentle floating euphoria. But here is the catch, and this is why you might be missing it. This system is fragile. If you run too fast, your body perceives stress instead of flow, and it shuts down anandamide production immediately. Most runners run their easy runs too hard, and by doing so, they chemically block the very feeling they are chasing. Dopamine, the chemistry of rhythm. But anandamide is just the calm. You also need the focus. This comes from dopamine. We often think dopamine is about pleasure, in running, dopamine is about rhythm. You know that moment when you stop looking at your watch? That moment when you don't care about the pace, you don't care about the distance, you are just locked into the cadence of your feet? That is dopamine stabilizing your neural pathways. It turns your brain into a metronome. But for dopamine to rise, your environment needs to be predictable. If you are constantly checking your GPS or stopping at traffic lights or surging to pass someone, you create dopamine error signals. The rhythm breaks, the high collapses. Serotonin and norepinephrine, the autopilot. Finally, to complete the cocktail, we have serotonin and norepinephrine. These are the chemicals of mood stability. This is the feeling of, I could run forever. It usually kicks in later around the 40 minute mark. It's a sensation of supreme confidence. The negative thoughts about your job, your bills, your relationship, they don't disappear, but they stop hurting. They become distant. Here's the problem. Most runners stop running at 25 or 30 minutes. They stop right before the chemical wave hits the shore. You are doing the work, but you are clocking out right before the paycheck arrives. Why 70% of runners miss the window? So why do 70% of runners never feel this? It's not because they aren't fit. It's because they violate the biological rules of the high. 
There are three main killers of runner's high. High intensity. If you are gasping for air, you are in fight or flight. Cortisol floods the brain. Cortisol kills dopamine. Game over. Mental stress. If you run while thinking about your problems, the brain never enters the sensory state needed for flow. The duration gap. As we said, it takes time for the chemistry to brew. But I want to speak to the beginners for a second. If you can currently only run for 20 minutes, do not get discouraged. You aren't failing. Every time you run, even for 20 minutes, you are building more receptors for these chemicals. You are building the infrastructure. So when you finally reach that 45 minute mark, the high will be even more intense for you. You are earning it right now. The golden window, timing your run. Neurobiology gives us a specific timeline for when this magic happens. Minutes zero to 20, this is the chemical warm-up. This is usually uncomfortable. Don't judge your run by the first mile at minutes 20 to 35. This is the stabilization phase. The stress drops, minutes 35 to 65. This is the golden window. This is where anandamide peaks. This is where the magic happens. This is why experienced runners often say the seventh kilometer feels infinitely easier than the first. They have entered the window. The protocol, neuropacing. So how do we manufacture this state on demand? I have developed a protocol I call neuropacing. We are not pacing for heart health. We are pacing for brain chemistry. Step one, true zone two, the sedative pace. You must run at a pace where you can speak in full paragraphs. If you can't talk, you are running too fast for anandamide. We are trying to sedate the amygdala, the fear center. Not excited. Slow down. Step two, boring consistency. No intervals, no fartlek, no sprinting up hills. For this specific run, be boring. Monotony triggers dopamine. Keep your stride like a pendulum. Step three, duration over distance. Forget kilometers, run for time. Aim for 45 to 60 minutes continuously. If you need to walk, walk. But keep moving to keep the metabolic engine running. Step four, low sensory input. If possible, run in nature. Fractal patterns in trees and leaves have been proven to reduce mental noise. If you run in the city, the constant threat detection of cars and traffic lights will block the flow state. Beyond running, the exclusive membership. Understanding your neurochemistry is the first step, but how do you combine this with nutrition? What supplements actually support anandamide production? How does sleep affect your dopamine receptors? In the exclusive membership channel, we go much deeper into biohacking for runners. We analyze recovery protocols, supplement stacks, and advanced physiology that supports this chemical state. If you want the full operating manual for your body, the link to join is in the description. The quick fix for tomorrow? Here's your homework for tomorrow morning. I want you to try this quick fix. Set an alert on your watch. Set it to beep if your heart rate goes above 75% of your maximum. Commit to staying below that line for 45 minutes. It might feel painfully slow. You might feel like you are shuffling. Trust the process. Do this four times a week. Research suggests that by training your body to tolerate this low intensity, you increase the probability of experiencing flow by 40% within just 21 days. Start training with science. If you are tired of running against your body, if you are tired of every run feeling like a battle, if you want to build an aerobic engine that actually performs, my coaching is designed for one purpose, to make your training align with your biology, not fight against it. No myths, no guesswork, no generic plans, just science, structure, and a program tailored to your unique physiology. If you want to train inside a system built on real biology and predictable progress, start coaching with me today. I'll see you in the next video. Run smart, your running journey powered by science.